Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm confused here. D didn't we, weren't we going to do Silent Night, Deadly Night? I thought we were doing Silent Night, Bloody Night. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. We're talking about different movies. Two hours later. <laughs> This week we're doing uh, 1977's Kingdom of the Spiders. That's a movie that I've seen numerous, numerous times over the years, going way back to when I was a little kid. It's the kind of movie that would show up on late night television, uh, you know, your horror movie of the week, that sort of thing. It's the kind of movie that every kid saw uh, when I, back, back when I was that age, and uh, eventually I, I rented it, copied it, and watched it more and more again, and... Um, it's it's truly you know I, I, no spoilers here. It's one of my all time favorite horror movies. Period. I just that was it. a that was around a time where there was a lot of movies like that with like um, insects and there was bees and killer bees <laughs> and like different ants and things like that. There was a yeah. frog one too, I think. Yep. I, uh, yeah, there was a lot of animals gone wild in the mid seventies or early seventies, late seventies. Uh, there was ants, Empire of the Ants, the Deadly Bees, the Savage Bees. It came from the sky, or no, Tear Out of the Sky, and Frogs with Ray Meland. Uh, I, I've seen all of them. Yeah, there was just kind of uh, a lot of there them. There was also one with rabbits, too, wasn't it? Yes, Night of the Lepus. Yeah, I have oh that my one, God. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it with, like, people and their fear of, like, animals and in insects and normally not that harmless creatures you know you would think spiders are scary looking but for the most part most of them you could just squash you know with your shoe yeah and that actually even happens in this movie uh uh you probably couldn't film this today but they use real spiders for the most part in this movie real tarantulas and uh if you look in some of the scenes those spiders got killed they got squished they got ran over by a car. You can even see their guts spill up at one point uh, when a police car runs over some in the streets. Um, yeah, the ultimate thing here with these particular spiders is that uh, there's a lot of pesticides being sprayed all over the countryside. It takes place in Arizona, near Sedona, actually. And um, the pesticides are kind of killing off the, the, the spider's uh, food supply. And it's leaving them not with they got to find other means so they end up attacking cows and other animals and eventually they just go wild in, in the city and attack people too i think that's ultimately what they were saying was that man's interference is causing these spiders to run rampant and go wild mm -hmm. so for william shatner are you are you like a big fan of his well i'm i am a big star trek fan i've always loved star trek and the original is is awesome i love it i grew up with it um I think he's an over actor, but uh, I, I do like <laughs> William Shatner, yeah. When did this take place in his um, acting career? Was this like between Star Trek and TJ Hooker? Like what what around the time was, was he yeah. shooting this? Star Trek ended in 1969. This movie came out in 1977. Shatner actually made a lot of low budget B movies in the 70s before after Star Wars came out in 1977 then they decided to reboot Star Trek and the first motion picture for Star Trek came out in 1979 two years after this movie so yeah and it was it was before TJ Hooker maybe about five years before TJ Hooker but yeah mm -hmm. yeah because he's kind of known for his his long-standing TV shows but when he did movies they would generally be movies he was never right that style of acting wouldn't really get you in like an A-level production that can't be. No, I think you could probably say he was an A-level TV star just from Star Trek alone. And he's obviously known as Captain Kirk from Star Trek. But beyond that, and perhaps beyond that, and maybe Kingdom of the Spiders, I'd be, I think most people would be hard-pressed to think of anything else he's done other than, you know, T.J. Hooker. T.J. Hooker, Star Trek, and Kingdom of the Spiders. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, I think he won an Emmy for like one of his later um, shows when he was older. Yes, uh, wasn't he in? Uh, was it Boston Legal? Was that the name of the show? Which I don't Spader? remember, but it was something where he was like a lawyer or something. Or, yeah, I think know. it was called Boston Legal. Yeah, that's right. He made that. Yeah, he's definitely more of a TV outside of the Star Trek movies. He's definitely a TV actor. Yeah, it's interesting to see him as a leading man here. Um, so I think he has like kind of like a weird relationship with his 
dead brother's wife. Um, yeah, it's it's more it's more the wife who is looking looking for that. She she's obviously lonely and she's reaching out. She wants. It's clear that she wants a relationship. Uh, beyond a, a brother-in-law relationship with Shatner. Shatner actually pushes back and uh, it, it isn't looking for that. Uh, he's definitely uh, mother or fatherly to the to the child that was left behind. Uh, he, and he does, you know, look after them and take care of them. But in terms of a romantic relationship, he pushes back. Yeah, you kind of wonder with stuff like that because you always hear about Shatner having sex with a lot of his, like, <laughs> female co-stars not necessarily like the main stars but like the extras and the women who would kind of be like starstruck by his fame so you always kind of wonder with actors like that if they have it written in that they have to be like all the attractive women in their shows or movies have to be attracted to them you know yeah well the interesting thing about this particular one is the widow actually was played by Shatner's real life wife at the time. I guess then it's a little less harsh that she actually wants him because <laughs> she actually does want him. Yeah. <laughs> or um, she did she did at that time, put it that way. But yeah, they they, yeah. they divorced, I think, not long after. Yeah, yeah. So what made you watch this so much? Was it just because it was always on TV? Or was there something about this particular movie that connected you to it? Well I think this movie particularly connects with you when you're young. Uh it was it was the pre-cable days for me and it's the kind of movie that you know we only had three channels where i grew up originally before cable finally got to us uh, when i was about 11 years old but prior to that we had the three channels so there wasn't a lot of entertainment in terms of tv movie wise you had to take what was on there was no vcrs um nothing so when this when a horror movie came on it seemed like all the kids in my age wanted to watch it you know, and then we could all relate to it. We could talk about it in school the next day, that sort of thing. Um, and I enjoyed the movie. It's it's very memorable to me. And one of the reasons I've watched it over and over again is it does legitimately frighten me to a point because I do not like spiders. I don't like them at all. I will run from a spider. I don't care how old I am. I'm going to run from a spider. I don't like them. I will squish them if I have to, but I try to avoid them as best I can. And these spiders are big. And they bite, and I don't like them. So I can remember, actually, when I originally rented this movie and copied it, it was nighttime, and I was in my room, and the light was off. I took a flashlight out when I was done just to look on the floor to make sure there was no spiders. That's what this movie did to me. So I thought, if that movie did this to me, then it's got to be an effective film. Yeah, I liked um, Woody Strode in this movie. Um, he played the uh, older black guy that gets killed. Yep. Uh, because this is a weird time in cinema because the a lot of the actors, black actors that got work was mainly in the exploitation films. So this was a guy who had some crossover appeal um, and it was good to see him in this. But I, I just thought that like, his wife was just like not only way too attractive for him, but was like half his age. So. But he kind of died stupidly. And I think a lot of these characters kind of died stupidly. Uh, but I guess they were just there for the body count because they, they're otherwise the, the side characters didn't really bring a lot to the film. It's a memorable scene with him too. Everybody seems to remember I, he was driving down the road in his pickup truck and the spiders start crawling up his back and then he freaks out and drives off the road. That looks like Colby's truck. It is Colby. You know, again, I could relate to that because if I saw those spiders crawling on my back, they're huge, I would freak out too. Hopefully I wouldn't run off the road, but... Um, I can relate to that to a certain degree. And in regards to his wife, um, uh, that was played by uh, Altavis Davis, uh, wife of Sammy Davis Jr., actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird. Like, I mean, I guess if she's with Sammy Davis Jr., I guess Strode would be an upgrade in certain ways. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, from what I've read about this movie, uh, Shatner has talked about Woody Strode. And I think he was an ex-football player. And he said, you know, even though he was older at this point, he was in his 60s. He said, I think he was in his 60s, if not older. He said his arms were just gigantic and huge. And he was just just a powerful muscle of a man. He was in a lot of pretty good movies back then. But like I said, it was hard for like, you know, black actors back then to really get um, really substantial roles unless it's like in those low budget um, exploitation stuff. So it was good to see him in this. And even though he, he was there to just die pretty silly 
in a way, you know. But <laughs> this is a silly movie, no matter how you look at yes. it. What did you think about the ending? It was kind of dark the way they decided <laughs> to like go about it. It was dark and silly, but I guess this movie is kind of silly anyway. But I expected more of an upbeat ending than than what the, this movie had. The, yeah, and I think what gets me about that any more than anything is just, it's so memorable. Even if somebody hasn't really seen this movie over and over and over again like I have, they will always remember that scene. It's just kind of like a nightmare, you know, the fact that this whole town is covered with a giant web. It's ridiculous, of course, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, it's it's And the it's length very of memorable. time it would take to weave that web, it's just like... <laughs> To have some plausibility to your story, you know, <laughs> the amount of spiders and the amount of time. And uh, this is certainly not the birds, so it won't be remembered on that kind of a level. But I guess it's it's a, I guess it's a nice little campy movie for for those interested. Um, I guess it's definitely a recommend, but um, definitely nothing you take too seriously. Uh, for me, like this is a little bit older for me. So for me, like the spider movie, I kind of remember from childhood is more so arachnophobia, mm -hmm. um, which is also kind of like a, but that is more tongue in cheek than this is. This is more like uh, unintentionally funny at times and arachnophobia was intentionally funny, I guess would be the right. difference. And uh, I, I can point out the re a friend of mine and myself, we've been obsessed with Kingdom of the Spiders since we were kids. He even more so than I did. He would watch it literally every Saturday night for years. Um, but uh, because of this film, that's the reason we decided to go see Arachnophobia together, because we both had a fear of spiders. We both love this movie, so why not go see Arachnophobia? And that's what we did, which we also liked very much. How would you stack them up against each other? Well, like, the, like you said, they're different films. This is more of a B film, a campy film, although I do think it's well done for what it is. Arachnophobia had you know, a bigger budget and, and was just had a better look to it more stylish but um I, I like kingdom of the spiders more again there's a nostalgia factor for me too of course but mm -hmm. but they're both good having a fear of spiders also helps too because that instills some real fear in me and i don't and if, if a film can scare me which is i'm really hard it's really hard to do because i am so jaded after seeing so much carnage over the last several decades but if a film can legitimately scare me I, I gotta say it's a good film. Yeah. I wanna be scared.